Hello, everyone. This is Angela, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Marin. You've got episode 139, How We Homeschool Through a Pandemic, part 10. <laughs> and we are going to get to that in just a few minutes. But first, we want to say hello. Thank you so much for showing up uh, and being here with us, going through this pandemic with us, <laughs> going through homeschooling with us. And we want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. You are making this happen today. And so many projects that are upcoming it's because of you. So we thank you so much for that. And we want to shout out some new patrons, Susan, Diane, David, Rebecca, and Sharon. Thank you so much for joining. And um, we can't wait to get to know you. Definitely. Uh, we are a small business affected by the global pandemic. You know, people have different listening habits and capacities since this all started. And I know my listening habits have changed. So I definitely understand understand this. Some of you have already been so supportive during this time, and we thank you so much. We are getting lots of new um, ratings and reviews. Mm. We appreciate that. We're getting new it's patrons. Huge. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, if you have the opportunity, we'd love to have you subscribe to our podcast, share it with a friend, or mm -hmm. on social media. You can rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can get our app school guide from our website, or you can join our $5 squad on Patreon. Uh, now is a really great time to join Patreon because we are going to be taking a break this summer. This is actually our last episode before our summer break. We've mm -hmm. never really done a um, like complete break. Yeah, <laughs> never really yeah. done that in the three and a half years that we've recorded. And we mm -hmm. are this time. We are this summer. So, um, But we are not taking a break from Patreon. So if you um, want to still get content, we are going to still be doing episodes every other week there. Or not every other week, twice a month there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we also just did a curriculum wrap up where we talked about all the curriculum we used this last year. And that is in Patreon right now in an audio format. We also have a PDF for that. Uh, patrons also get extended interviews when we have guests. They're our first to know for all of our news and announcements. And so if you are interested in joining, you can go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Uh, we are going to talk about summer this week because it's what's next and what's on our minds. And so we're going to talk about that and we're going to do the same kind of setup that we've been doing mainly most of the pandemic episodes, which is we're going to talk about the, the state of the family and then, um, or the kind of the state of us, the mm -hmm. state of our homeschool situation. How things are and, going. Exactly. Um, and then in the nitty gritty, we're going to do a few um, a few things like we're going to talk about just some tent poles that are really going to hold us down this summer. Um, we're going to definitely talk about self-care because that's so important to us. Um, and just some, some fun things that we're going to make sure that we include this summer. So, um, And just a reminder, we're going to be taking a break for the summer except for Patreon. And we will be back in August. So not even the whole summer, but just like... Uh, the couple months yeah yep exactly all right so let's start let's start with our main topic shall we let's do that Marin, right. how is yeah. how are things going with you and your family okay so as some of you know probably most of you if you've been listening um anytime this year we have been traveling since july so about almost 10 months and we've been going around the whole united states spending about one month in different places around the United States. And we spent, um, we've been here in Austin, Texas for like four of those months. So um, we are now packing up and getting ready to go home to Minnesota. It is, you know, a big, a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think because we've been here the longest, you know, we feel kind of like we've um, grown into this house into our neighborhood into our city and so even even though we've been um quarantining <laughs> for like half the time it still just feels like um you know an uprooting kind of so we're packing we are kind of phasing out of school work we're still doing some school work um one of my kids uh, joined the public school here and so she's doing a little bit of work this week and then she's done um, but it, they even kind of like phased out work so it's like a little bit of work this week which was kind of nice um, the co-op is over for the kids who were in co-op um, and so we're just kind of we're we're moving into this new season 
um yeah that's so, really exciting and yeah. moving is a big deal um it is. i know because i know people are curious are you driving yeah. home we are we're gonna drive home yeah. <laughs> from austin texas to minnesota next week and that's week. like a 20 hour drive or something it is. Right? So, okay well yeah. it will be for us yep because of the okay. stops things like that so yeah so we're gonna take it in two days and um, we've planned out, you know, how we're going to do this COVID-19 style, yep. <laughs> pandemic style, and how we're going to get it, um, you know, how we're going to do this safely. And um, my, my Sean is like really great at planning all these things, like how we're going to make it, make it work safety wise and stuff. So I'm, I'm so glad that I don't really have to totally think about all that stuff. Yeah. But um, that's really reassuring. Ugh, yeah. I know you sure. guys, you and Sean are both, um, really safety conscious during this pandemic we have been yeah we really um, have been yeah yeah you're well matched in that way so yeah yeah <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure you have that all figured out yeah I mean you know for me I'd be like let's just I don't want to I don't want to think about it all let's just drive through mm. <laughs> or let's just sleep in our car because I'm not super detail oriented but Sean mm-hmm. is better at that kind of stuff so he's he's planning out ways that we can actually sleep in a hotel and things like that so yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're also, I just have to say, we're also doing, we really starting this week have started doing more screens and that is just because I'm not like big into doing screens all the time. I'm not big into like, uh, no screens, you know, like I'm really just about the situation and what works best for all of us. And so for us this week, more screens has been like the choice because number one, we have friends who are away from us and They get to see each other on screens and play together Mm -hmm. and do things virtually. And they're like our friends. They're like, you know, this is it for us right now. So Mm -hmm. I, it's really hard for me to not allow that kind of stuff. Number two, with packing and stuff, it's just been so great that they've found other things to do. And Mm -hmm. I feel like um, a lot of good things happen on screen sometimes too. So um, I sometimes think there can't be anything good that they're doing while they're staring at the screen but sometimes they I mean they just surprise me so much like they'll come up to me and show me this amazing thing they created or um I don't know games that they've played and things like that so anyway I'm finding the positive things and we're I'm really like helping guide them into in like what they're doing on the screens too so Mm -hmm. it's not just like a free-for-all but okay I'm feeling good about it I feel okay good well also I thought you were gonna say I thought you were going to say it's 100 degrees here and yeah, we too. can't be outside all the time. <laughs> that is another huge factor, I have mm-hmm. to say. Like the highs this week are in the upper 90s. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, we might do a hike in the morning. But I, like I mentioned on Instagram stories this week, like I am not even pressing that mm. s- super hard because um, I have kids who are like super, sen- you know, a little sensitive about heat and and to hike even just a bit is like can be very difficult <laughs> yeah. in the heat like mm-hmm. the and their energy just gets zapped and they don't feel good and it's just a whole thing and so we've done that we've done so much hiking and I feel really good about what we've done and I'm just going to trust that like the experience that we've had mm-hmm. is enough yep and, and whoever wants to go hiking with me now can Mm-hmm. And if it's not your thing this week when it's 99 degrees out, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. That's and good. so, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's another factor. For yeah. And thing. something I've learned because we've traveled a little bit too is, mm-hmm. or taken any kind of big trip, there's always more screens that happen leading mm-hmm. up to that trip. Just it's always. A, it's so true. I have to reassure myself, like, every. I don't know, five, 10 times a day. Like it is okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) I need a big sign. It's okay right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are seasons for these things and this is one of our seasons. So it's fine. Um, I also feel like I'm, I am kind of torn between thinking so much about the next school year and like what that's going to look like. So many, I mean, in the past, we've all made decisions often in the spring, things Mm -hmm. you have to sign up for in the spring that are going to happen in the fall. Right. And I know that's different this year for sure. So I'm, I'm, um, relieved about that, that maybe some of these decisions don't have to be made right now. Um, but you know, I, I sometimes get anxious about like, how is this going to look and what are we going to do? And how's this, 
I mean, all the needs of all four of my kids and, you know, it's so hard to even know now Mm -hmm. what they're going to need in September. You know, things change over the summer. I think probably every homeschool parent is nodding their head right now. Yeah. (laughs) I think we all understand that. We all feel that, right? Yes. It's universal. And I think even public school kids, you know, like parents are probably mm-hmm. thinking the same thing, especially this year, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, maybe every year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's so hard to know what this summer especially is going to bring, but I do feel like this whole move, you know, we're moving to a new home in a, in a week and, um, the packing and saying goodbye to Austin. And, um, I, I've been reflecting so much on this year or two of traveling. Um, and so I feel like I haven't even given this uh, fall planning as much <laughs> energy as maybe I would normally, mm. you know, by now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually like kind of thankful for that. Yeah. You've had um, a few I'm, distractions. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, you know, like I just, the things that are happening right now are kind of requiring me to be present right here. And I'm like, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of going with that. Yeah. I'm just letting myself not think too much about the fall. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I don't know how you're feeling about the fall. I know we've talked a little bit about it and. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling similarly. I'm also um, telling myself that nobody knows what's going to happen in the fall. And so so no need to get anxious about it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make the decisions along with everybody else. And then like August. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's so great. (laughs) I am not making any decisions right now about anything. And if something is full. And I so missed it. it. It's okay. Yes. And you kind of like, had taught me that before. When yeah. the, when we aren't in a pandemic, you know, the you can feel the rush to want to sign up for things in February or March or whatever mm-hmm. because there's only mm-hmm. twelve spots or whatever. And <laughs> right, you've right. always you've always said, well, if it's full, it's just not for us. And um, yeah, that I I want to be that relaxed, and so I'm really trying. Well, to yeah, be that I mean, I just think if I don't feel like I should sign up if it if it were something I really felt strongly about signing Mm. up for I would do it yeah um but if I don't feel strongly about it I'm not ready to yet yeah so yeah yeah Yeah. I know it's it's hard it is the fall is a the great unknown and I'm sure uh, all of you listening are feeling the same way yeah um yeah it's and I think like for you and I both some of our kids tried school this year yeah Mm -hmm. and uh, some of our kids tried co-ops and stuff, yep, yep. Um, and all of that is up in the air too. Exactly. And so it it just makes it extra. I don't know. It's extra hard because you can go by like you can think about what worked and what didn't work this past year, mm-hmm. but that doesn't necessarily inform what you would do next year because it I might know. be different. So um, I don't know. Yeah, and my my oldest was is now thinking about the year after. Because, oh, yeah. you know, we've kind of talked about how next year is going to be, we don't know. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, you know, has mentioned a few times, well, maybe next year I just do home, you know, I just stay home and we don't do any cups or anything. And then, you know, or we see. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, here's what I want to do. Or yeah. maybe. But mm-hmm. I mean, that's, it's so far out. But I do feel like um, that kind of felt good to me <laughs> that she was thinking about Yeah, can about we that? just wait a year? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not that we have to make decisions for that year right now, yeah. but like but just kind of know, putting things on to hold. know, yeah, just to have that perspective. But. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, how about you? Anything? What's going on with your family, and how are you all doing? Um, well, we're um, you know things are starting to open up here in Minnesota, and mm-hmm. so and I know this is the case across the country. In some places, I know some places aren't start, starting to open up, but yeah. here it is. And I, that brings some anxiety for Mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. because I wish there was a rule. I wish there were rules that I could just follow and that everybody followed and we were all on the same page, but there's not really. Yeah. And so, um, we're having to like make our best choices for our own family and then other people might be making different choices. And, um, I think that just provides me some anxiety because, Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to be hard to see, like, not compare yourself to what other people are doing. Yeah. And my kids' friends, I, what are they t- doing? Yeah. You know? Um, and so I've done a little bit of letting go with them, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of social distance 
friend get togethers and you know it's only may so i'm um kind of i'm i'm i know that this summer you know it's going to get a little bit more relaxed and i'm wondering how i'm going to yeah. navigate that yeah yeah i think it's i mean your kids are 15 13 and 11 mm-hmm. and then when they get together with friends or when and if they get together with friends they can they're probably old enough to like stay apart stay apart they Mm -hmm. you know they can do that i am thinking about (laughs) the kids who you know just don't just can't Mm do that i yeah i was you know we were we were hiking or yeah we were hiking the other day and at the creek there were there was just like a mob of like four-year-olds probably Mm, four or five year olds i got my eight my heart started beating i was like oh my gosh because you know, mm-hmm. four-year-olds just don't know. They don't yeah. have social distance. They can't do that. Yeah. And I just think, oh, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be that's, real tough. That's hard. I haven't sure. seen any of that. People are very, I haven't seen groups congregate yet. Now, maybe we're, uh, maybe I will in a week or two. I don't know. Yeah. But I haven't yeah. really seen that much, especially with younger kids. I've just seen them with their parents and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kind of staying separate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know, I know that's just, I know it's just going to be a challenge for everybody. I know it's a it, challenge. Yes. And also like how not to judge other people and what they're, the decisions they're making. I know. Because I think the automatic, it, I think it's a natural, I think it's natural to judge people, even if you try not to, because you're just comparing totally. yourself like, oh, they're doing something different than me. And somebody <laughs> right, might right. feel judgment when you're you don't mean that you're just looking at them or oh, exactly you and might I might feel somebody's judgment when they're not really judging uh, you. totally and I was actually I had so many feelings about the four-year-olds playing because I was like if I had a four-year-old I would I would probably be tempted to join them yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding you because yeah. I I'd be having a real tough time at home mm-hmm. right now you know yeah. with younger kids um and so uh yeah and and this is going to be part of i don't know self when we talk about self-care but like i'm i i really want to have boundaries but i also want to let go of Mm -hmm. some things too me too so me too me too i just think i can't imagine having younger kids right now um because when i had younger kids i really needed other supports whether Mm -hmm. it was like an activity they were in a babysitter a grandparents, a friends, mm-hmm. or whatever. And I know that the people with younger kids have been going without that yeah. for a few months. I know. And that's, I know. That's got to be really hard. So um, I'm sure that they're very anxious to get back into totally. the way it was. And I understand <laughs> that. <laughs> get it? Ugh, so tough. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to nitty gritty. Um, we yeah. thought that we kind of thought of three things that we thought were important to think about in the summer. Mm -hmm. I know for me, at least summer can seem daunting. Like, um, Oh wow. How am I going to, how am I going to make this work? Especially Mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's daunting for me every year, but especially this year, how am I going to make this work for everybody? Um, it just feels like a huge project that in May I'm not ready to tackle. Because I don't really know. (laughs) And And so, yeah, yeah. just like we talked about how, you know, how are we going to know about next fall right now? I think sometimes it's hard to know about next week, you know? Yeah. Um, And so it's it's hard to know. Right. What are these tent poles going to be? And what are we going to make sure we stick to? So we were kind of thinking about three things that are helpful for for us to think about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we just wanted to share them with you. And that is, what are your tent poles going to be? Yep. And we'll talk about those in detail in a minute. Um, how are you going to do self-care? And then how are you going to have fun? And when I thought about those three things, I kind of felt a, I, I hate to use the word plan, structure, l- light structure, forming. Yeah, as I started yeah, to think about yeah, those three yeah. things. And so we thought maybe that would be helpful for you. And so as we talk about these, you can, if it helps you, think about how um, you can implement those in your yeah, own summer yeah. planning. I think about these things when you were, as you were describing that, I was like picturing in my mind a bridge that's like, you know, one of those kind of like suspension bridges that are kind of, that kind of like move, you know, like mm-hmm. they're, they move with you. And so I feel like it's like these things are kind of like the bridge 
the bridge that's gonna like bring us through the summer and yet they're you know it's not Mm, like this flexible uh rigid yes Mm -hmm. it's it's very flexible and movable and you know it's just the thing that's there in place to help us you know get to the other side right yeah (laughs) i always love your visual analogies Mm, i don't think of things that way (laughs) but that's that makes sense thanks Okay, so we've talked about ten poles a lot in our mm-hmm. podcast, and that's just kind of our word for um, what are the things that you're kind of staking in the ground as mm-hmm. things that you are going to um, concentrate on or put as a priority. Yes. And I feel like it's helpful for me to think of one to two things this summer that take priority over everything else what Mm -hmm. would would you say that's about right one to two Maren or do you have a few more I have a couple I have a you have a couple yeah I might have a couple more than that but I think in general I think it's uh I don't know I have to say like a lot of these tent poles that I thought of are things that I'm bringing with me through from the spring Mm. you know what I Mm -hmm. mean so I just started thinking of like the things that I kind of want to keep the same Mm. okay that's a good Um, way and yeah just to have some consistency especially while we're moving and there Mm -hmm. may be big changes in other people's homes too so like you know just to have some consistency in changing things is Mm -hmm. really nice (laughs) yeah yeah that that can happen here in Austin it can happen in Minnesota it can happen Mm -hmm. wherever we go in a hotel room whatever Mm -hmm. so yeah and I just want to say that if you are moving, sick, yes. mm-hmm. working outside the home or inside yeah. the home, yep. taking care of someone, you know, that is those are one of your temples. Those are your temples. Yeah. Th- that's a thing that mm-hmm. you're concentrating on. And so m- remember to count that because that takes a lot of your time and energy. Yep, exactly. Um, so true. So, okay, Maren, why don't you yeah. share with us what your temples are? Okay. So the first one I thought of is uh, reading. And okay. I'm thinking of read alouds. And I have to say, I know my kids are kind of, we kind of weave in and out of doing read alouds. Right now we're in, we're in it. And so I just want to, I want to ride this wave <laughs> yep. of, of people, you know, being willing to do this with me because it's one of my favorite things. It's mm-hmm. like one of the reasons why I wanted to homeschool in the first place was to do more read alouds because I think there's so much power in it. And I know that sometimes that hasn't worked out for me, for us as a family yep. to do read alouds. Mm-hmm. It's just somebody, people haven't been willing to do it. And I just had to go along with it. Um, I mean, there's so many reasons, but right now it's working for us and I want to keep it going. Yeah. So I don't know what that <laughs> is specifically going to look like this summer though. And this is the part of the bridge that's going to just have to be flexible. Like, is it going to be in the morning when we wake up? I kind of doubt it because people are all waking up at different times. And in the summer, I don't, I want to, I want to regulate that less. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So maybe it's during lunchtime. Um, That's, we've done that in the past. Like whenever we're eating together, I just, I pull out the book and I start reading. Um, Maybe it's after lunchtime. Um, There also, I'm thinking about maybe it's not even a whole family read aloud, which is my favorite, but I know um, my kids are really appreciating one-on-one time with me. And so to be able to do a read aloud with each kid might be the thing that I do this summer. I did tell my nine-year-old that when we move, I'm going to start reading Harry Potter to her. Mm. Before bed. <laughs> wow. I know. And and so she's remembering that. She's reminding me. Remember, we're going to do that. And I think about that because, you know, my other three kids went through, like, went through and are still, some of them, going through, like, obsessions with listening to Harry Potter on audio. And it, I think with my oldest, it's It was probably around age nine and my nine-year-old has my, now my youngest, my nine-year-old has not um, listened to the stories yet. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is going to be a great time for her. And for so many reasons, I feel like this one-on-one time at bedtime is going to be great for Mm -hmm. for us. It's kind of what she needs and it's going to be a good thing. I put that out there and now I'm like a little bit regretting that I... Said we're going to hold that, you to it but I know no. <laughs> so we'll see she's going to hold me to it too I think so. I feel like that is a huge commitment and I see yeah. a lot of you listening who I see on Instagram reading Harry Potter to your kids and I think that is a huge commitment 
I that know. is they're so I mean, long they're long yeah. they're intense there are yep. several yep. books <laughs> yeah. yeah so well I think one thing that happened is one we moved into uh when our family of six moved into a small a small house um we I ran out we ran out of room for like chairs in bedrooms and so I couldn't sit and read or rock with the kids anymore and I really miss mm. that and I now that we're moving into a bigger house again I think I'm going to be able to sit in the same room as my kids. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like what, what I've been, this is like, you know, my dream homeschool experience is this yeah. reading. So I'm just going to, I put it out there and we'll see what happens. Um, but so anyway, read alouds are, you know, dear to my heart and I want to keep them going. Right. Do you have, what? what's one of your tent poles, Angela? Okay. One of my tent poles is getting intense exercise for my kids. Awesome. Making sure my kids get intense exercise. That's awesome. This was actually one of my temples last summer. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I have one child, my youngest, uh, who he just really benefits from an extended period of intense exercise in the Mm -hmm. morning. That's Mm -hmm. really what, if if he could do that every day, things would go so well. And so last summer, I signed him up for tennis. Because it was every day. <laughs> I looked was for like something that was, I looked for something that was every day. <laughs> yes. um, I signed him up for tennis <laughs> and I got him to buy into it. And he did this for like an hour every morning, right? Well, Monday through Thursday. And those days were amazing. It's just like he got his energy out and then he could, mm-hmm. you know, have a, a really great day. And so that is almost impossible to do um, in the winter in Minnesota. Also, there's no... Like for homeschoolers, there's no daily exercise program. Yeah. I wish there was. Exactly. If somebody, this is a business idea, I would sign up for your daily (laughs) exercise program. I'd pay for that. I'd pay for that. (laughs) Uh, From like eight to nine. Run them hard. Okay. Yes, please. Anyway, um, so I know that this is my chance again Mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, Now with the pandemic, you know, there's nothing to sign up for. So, I know it's on me and yeah. I, it's really important to me. And so this is my thing. This is what I need to do. And so um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet. I have a few ideas, but. Mm. I can't <laughs> wait to hear because uh, we just want to, I may just want to <laughs> copy what you do. Kind of like you, now that That's I put great. it out there, I feel a little self-conscious. <laughs> um, my ideas are daily hike in the morning mm-hmm. or walk. Um, or bike ride, but I want it to be for an hour. Like this cannot be a 10 minute thing. This has to be an extended period, right? Yes. Uh, or I toyed with getting my kids, kids Fitbits. Like we had talked about in some episode, I can't remember. Um, and saying like, we need to get a certain number of steps or Mm -hmm. something. I don't know. Or maybe a combination of both. Family goal. That'd be cool. Yeah, like some family goals. Mm. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. And then I, but then I was like, well, if we have a step goal, then if somebody goes on a bike ride, then they don't get steps for that. So they're not going to want to go on a bike ride. And I don't know. Well, so, actually, I think bike, I think biking actually might give you some steps. Really? I think it does. Actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or I'm you not, could do an exercise goal. Because I know. You know. Or something. Yeah. Some kind of goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. Or like, okay, now I'm thinking, or like at the end of the week, you get a reward of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know what it would be, but I know. Anyway, I'm I'm toying with some things, and they're going to be implemented in two weeks because that's when we're going to be done with. That's when that's our great. summer is starting. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a couple weeks to figure this out, but um, that is definitely probably my biggest priority this summer. I think that is so great mm-hmm. I wish I would have put that on my list really but it, I was it is thinking, now <laughs> I was thinking oh I should put read on my list but that's okay <laughs> that's what this is for this is I mean it's for inspiring it's not okay mm-hmm. so I just have to disclaimer this is not for you to just say make you feel like you have to do all these things right no but it is you know if you feel inspired that's great and we know we always like to hear from you too and what, what's on your you know, 10 pole list too. Right. Okay, um, Marin. 
How about yeah, you? Okay. So another thing that I want to do in this, this is adjacent to that, but it's basically family, family walks and hikes. And okay. it, actually I wasn't thinking about intense exercise, but actually that would be a benefit <laughs> of it. But I think it's just because it's been routine for us to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. S- you know, since we've been here in Austin, especially, um, and so I want to continue that. I, I think it's something that people know is happening. They are now looking forward to it, except when it's 95 degrees out. Um, and it's like this uh, a, f- a shared family experience. Yes. And I that's all I can ask for. It's just this priceless experience mm-hmm. um, every time. Even when there's complaining, I feel like there's a sense of accomplishment at the end. And so yeah. I feel really good about that. So... I, we don't live like right next to any hiking, right, you know, like right out our front door like we do here. So I'm trying to figure out how that's going to happen. Mm. We're probably going to have to drive places. Really? Okay. Well, you have, you're in a residential area, so you can, it's not going to be yeah. hiking, but you could go on it's walks or bike we rides. We can or... certainly go on walks every day for sure. Yeah. 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 So that's an important thing that yeah. I just want to keep going. And I just, it's one of those things that I, it could easily, I could say, you know what? It's not a big deal. Let's just let it go. But I'm not going to, I'm mm-hmm. not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's I like it. So yeah. Now you have me thinking mm. <laughs> I should, should, I might mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. have my intense exercise be the entire family and not just one child. Mm. and me I think yeah we should do a whole family in the morning we all I don't know maybe we'll have to switch it up I like mean, Mondays is a bike ride Tuesdays is a hike or something yes, like that yeah. I don't know yeah so I'm gonna do some thinking about that definitely okay all right my next one is <laughs> this may sound silly but my next one is having a routine yeah great. um Which- I what does that I, entail for you? Okay, so a routine is I just cannot have the entire day just be a free for all with yes. no structure. Yeah. Um actually I I would like that. I w- I would want I would want that ideally. Like I don't want to mm-hmm. have to manage a routine, but I, I know yeah. we all work best when we have one. Ugh, yes. At least I don't know about you, but I feel like if I have a day where I don't have any plans and I'm just kind of then I feel sluggish and like I didn't really do much. But if I have kind of a routine or structure, I feel like I moved through the day, I don't know, being purposeful. Yeah. Do you feel that way? Yeah. And I think it, I think also, yeah, routine, first of all, yeah, you can check some things off your box and say, I did those things. And then also it's kind of, it's like set up tent poles for you. You're like, I know what's happening next. I can, I know what to expect. That's why my son, you know, like, especially when the pandemic hit and we were all home for every day every night he'd be like what are we doing tomorrow like yeah it was so important to him and this right. is more important to some people than others but like um he doesn't ask anymore mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> I'm just realizing but that was after probably four to five weeks of asking every night yeah yeah what are we doing yeah. tomorrow so it's it it feels very safe it feels, it feels safe comfortable yeah feels very good yeah and you know my older two make their own routines every day and um my 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 son doesn't and so I feel like because we've been having a routine this whole Mm -hmm. time and it's been a nice predictable structure I would like to keep that going that is work for me to keep going though and so that's why I'm putting it as a tent pole it's because I know this is not going to be real easy especially in the beginning Mm -hmm. um it's going to be work and so my routine is going to look a little bit like this I I haven't figured it out but Mm -hmm. it's going to be very not intense but something like this, maybe the morning exercise, then maybe some free time, mm-hmm. then maybe lunch, um, maybe some more free time, Yep. then maybe deer time, which is drop everything and read and yeah. a walk. We've been doing that. We've been doing deer time and a walk currently as part of our routine. So given the morning exercise, not sure if we'll stu- still do that, maybe, but I would like to. And yeah. then maybe screens, dinner, family time go to bed I'm kind of thinking like if every day can have a similar to that structure where there's some flexibility in there to do your own thing Mm, to have your own free time but to still feel um like you can predict what's coming up next I think that will be really beneficial for my kids 
I think that's great because it's just it. You know, you're using these tent poles, you know, for your, for your to your advantage. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. You're using them in a really great way. I think that's great. yeah. All right. Do you have another tent pole or? Um, well, just you know, the other thing that I just thought of is that. Well, there's a couple things. Number one, chores and like a cooking schedule. I think I'm gonna keep. Mm. We've been doing like it's very guys very loose. The chores, it's not a ton of work, but it's something. Mm -hmm. When the, my kids expect, they expect that they're going to be doing a something. It's, they're, I mean, the arguments and the complaining is like, it's decreased, you right. know, by like 90%. So it's so worth it to me to just have the schedule mm -hmm. of something simple to do every day, maybe a couple times a day. Um, and then also the cooking schedule, which we started during the pandemic, which is like, we have four kids. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, each kid was assigned to a night. And it's not that they like are for the most part, well, some of my kids are doing all the work from beginning to end planning to finishing it up like all the way. But some of my kids are just, we're talking about what we should make together and we're working, we're doing it together. Mm. So either way. Um, it's just, you know, there's some responsibility taking place and then they feel really good about it and they mm -hmm. get thanked for a meal and it, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a positive experience for the most yes, part. That's good. So, yeah. So we're, I think we're going to just continue with that. Yeah, that's great. I'm liking that. Um, and then <laughs> the other thing is breaks. We need like breaks. And I think mm -hmm. in your routine, you had a lot of breaks too, like yeah. free time here, free time there and, you mm -hmm. know, screen time or whatever. Um, I need that and I need those planned in mm -hmm. and I need to I need to expect those mm -hmm. I need to I need to be able to expect those and my kids do too at certain times during the day just breaks what I'm not gonna make you do anything yeah <laughs> and 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 I need time alone I need to go out and do my own kind of exercising and whatever so those things are definitely gonna be um planned in yeah like non-negotiable that's a good point I should write down in my daily routine break like mom mom is also taking a break yes yes because sometimes during everybody's everybody's break that's mm -hmm. when I'm the most needed because I'm I like know. well where's this or yeah can you help me with this or yeah. something totally. so yeah yeah that's like important. mom is not available uh mm -hmm. definitely yeah okay do that <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, too, regarding academics, mm -hmm. um, I didn't really talk about them in my tent polls, but we are going to take a break from academics because everybody needs one. Yeah. Yep. Me and the kids. We mm -hmm. all need a break. We're all tired of it. We're ready to be done. And my oldest is in public school, and she's done at the end of the week. And so when she's done, we're all going to be done. Um, but we're right. not going to take a break all summer. We mm -hmm. are going to just take a break now, and we are going to come back to it. And when we come back to it, it is going to be very minimal. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit of reading, a little bit of math. And I'll probably plan it in to the morning somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or just a thing that you do on your own time. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I want us to stay kind of in that um, uh, routine, routine or feeling of having those academics be a little bit, little bit a part of our day. Right. Yep. Yep. I feel that for sure. All right. Let's move to self-care. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things are harder than normal right now mm -hmm. because of the pandemic, you know, <laughs> um, self-care is always important. We feel like it's always really important. Yes. Right we talk now. talk about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's extra important. It is. And I'm f really feeling this for myself. Um, I, I kind of used to be able to, if I didn't take care of myself on a day or two, I could get away with it. Right. I am not feeling that anymore. I am really needing mm -hmm. to intensely mm -hmm. take care of myself. Yeah. Critical. And it's critical. It's critical. Self-care time. It's critical. And uh, I really want to model this for my kids. Yes. And so uh, I need to have a plan because if I don't plan it, it's not going to happen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's less likely to happen. I <sighs> want to be proactive about planning, about planning, putting in a plan so that it probably will happen rather than I don't want to be reactive like, oh my gosh, I need some time alone. 
Yes. You know, I want it to be planned into the day. So, so great. Yep. We'll just encourage everybody to think about your own plan for taking care of yourself this summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And make it like priority. Make it a priority. Do you have a plan, Maren? Yeah. Well, okay. So the, my first thought of how I was going to take care of myself this summer was to, like I talked about earlier, plan my boundaries, especially during this pandemic. Like what are, what's my plan for boundaries? So I want to make sure that I, I have clear, a clear plan. Mm -hmm. So it can be boundaries or it could also be, like I said, letting go of boundaries. Mm. You know, it could be, maybe I have these things that are non-negotiable boundaries. We are not going to do this or this. And then there are some things that, you know, like I just, I don't want to let it over take my life the boundaries mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. you know we're isolating um I don't know too much or it's just too stressful for everyone and so because even now there have been times where I'm like well we're definitely not going to do that and my even my husband is like we're not like I think mm. we could probably do that so like yeah and if he's doing that I you know because you said we're we are so similar and where we're at I just I'm like what you think we could? Oh my gosh. And so like I'm reconsidering things all the time. Um, and I just want to be flexible in, you know, some of those thoughts a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my self care is to not let it overtake, you know, my life. Right. Right. (laughs) So boundaries and then letting go of boundaries and whatever that looks like. That's great. But I kind of want to have a plan when we get back to Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, is it hard for you to make plans right now? It is. Yeah. It's very difficult. Because <laughs> you don't even know. You haven't even seen your house. I mean, so you can't I even know. picture what your life's going to be like. We can't. And I know, you know, you're going to be moving in. You're going to be mm-hmm. getting all your stuff from storage and moving in. I mean, that's yeah. going to overtake mean, just, your life. Just moving, um, you know, stuff in. And we're doing it pretty much all on our own. But still, even just that is so much public getting out the public like more than we yeah. ever wanted yeah. to you know right. ever thought we would during this time so right. like just getting supplies for a new house mm-hmm. it, all of that is just going to take so much like getting out into the world which you know that is it's enough anxiety mm-hmm. producing right now mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so yeah so I just want to make sure that maybe I need to communicate that with family and friends you know or whatever so yeah. that we can just stick to our plan a little bit yep. And yep. then also let go of things if it's unimportant. Right, right. Yeah. So how about you? Um, one thing I'm going to do kind of like what you talked about is I'm going to try and outsource more dinner to my kids, mm-hmm. the dinner making. Mm-hmm. And this actually comes from my kids, which is a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit of a red flag to let me know that I kind of let this go too far, <laughs> which was when they say, mom, you need to give us more. You need to let us make dinner because you're really tired. Oh. And I thought, oh, is it showing? <laughs> is it showing? <laughs> You're right. I do need to do that more. And I think sometimes I think that that can be more work because I think it is more work sometimes. Yes. And, um, you know, I mean, yeah, it's definitely more work sometimes. But I am going to do that this summer, kind of like you do. You do. Maybe each kid gets a day or something. Yeah. Um, because I cannot. That That's like a daily stress like I wake Mm. up in the morning and think what are we gonna have for dinner I don't know it's a daily thing that's just always on my mind um that I want to get rid of so I think I'm gonna do that um it's huge it really it takes (laughs) up so much brain power or you know and energy Mm -hmm. that to let go of that would be I know and I, I don't know about you but I just think like it's all about what ingredients do we have yeah what will people eat what are people sick of I know what did we just have? What, it, I, it, and it's just like a puzzle that I can never <laughs> quite get to fit you know, right. <laughs> I know. And the more people you have, the harder it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so for us, I just, you know, I try and get like, you know, 60% of the people on board. What is, mm. what's a good percentage? Yeah. 75%. You know, like if there's a couple people who are like, I'm not eating that. I mean, yeah, I feel fine. like that's success. 
That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just was thinking like last night, what should I make? And then I was like, well, I can make chili. And then I thought, well, I don't really want chili. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really into chili. Do I want leftover chili? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I could make spaghetti. And then I was like, well, last time I made spaghetti, there was so many leftovers and I ate them every day. And I didn't really like that. You know, I don't know. I so know. my mind goes through all the things. I can make tacos, but we don't really have tomatoes or cheese. I know. I know. Could I still make tacos? You know, uh, totally. You could totally still make tacos. I know. I know. Just so you know, I've done that. <laughs> oh wow! But if somebody else just does it and they're like, "We're having tacos," I'd be like, "Great, great." Thank you. I know. Thank you. You're right. Yep, it's so true. So anyway, yep, so that's true. gonna be part of mine. And then the other thing is, I just got this Apple Watch, which I'm really excited about. Good. I feel like it's really motivating me because I'm checking my steps all the time to see how many steps I got. And so I'm also doing things like I need to get out on a walk because I got to knock these steps out early. I know. You know, I don't want to keep the steps till later in the day. I got to. It's not always easy to get those 10,000, right? (laughs) No. Or like I really want to walk. I really want to enter in a new activity. So Mm -hmm. maybe I could try cycling. (laughs) (laughs) or whatever you know um so that has been motivating for me and I like that I am noticing that I also need to another thing I want to do is let go and not do intense exercise when my Mm. body is telling me not to yes even though my apple watch is telling me to oh my goodness right do you feel like that because your body knows more well yeah and but I do think like I said I think I said this did I say this last week on the podcast um that a lot of if you if you do yoga yeah select yoga on your apple watch Mm -hmm. it doesn't require to do much intense i mean the your heart rate doesn't have to go up super high to get those exercise yeah right credit so i do feel like you know if i only hike or run uh, my body does not like that Mm. i can't you know I, it's hard for me to walk sometimes. Like when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yeah. oh my goodness, that's, this doesn't feel good. Um, but if I pair that with yoga, if mm-hmm. I pair running or something intense with yoga, I, it just balances everything out. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's actually really important. Like if I need those exercise minutes in, I just do more yoga yeah. <laughs> and I just good think it's better for my body anyway. Yeah. To get that, because that's the part that I that I neglect the yoga part. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. I mean, I'm much better at going on a hike or right. a run or whatever. So right. it's just so good for me to do that instead. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I'm going to keep doing that I've been doing since January is daily yoga slash meditation for like ten to fifteen minutes. Good. And the reason I don't know why this works for me, but I'm just going to tell everybody. Mm-hmm. I put it as a reminder in my phone. And to do yoga, right? And yeah. so my, my reminder pops up in the morning, and then I can't, I can't click it as done until I actually do it. And so, so it just stays there, right in the front of your phone. <laughs> so I don't know why that works for me. I'm sure that mm. doesn't work for some people. Or I, I don't know, but for some reason that works for me, and I always do it because I want to. Wow. Check it off. That's so great. That does <laughs> not work for me. It doesn't? No. I'm very good at ignoring my reminders. What Do you check it off or do you just ignore? No. I just ignore it. And then... <laughs> I know it's still there. <laughs> I know it's still there. Yeah. I don't know I what just, it is about the yeah. reminders, but mm, I'm very... Um, I'm a slave to those reminders. But I, I am kind of a slave to my rings, though, on my Apple Watch. Yeah. Yeah. I really... That's motivating to me. I get the gotta close those. Yeah. <laughs> that's really important to me. <laughs> All right. So, do you have anything more for self-care or should we um, move on? Well, the other thing is for me, like I just talked about, I really love hiking. I love getting out and exploring the outdoors mm. and I want to make that a priority this summer. And it's, um, it's going to take more work for me this summer to do it because we're not living right in Austin where there's all this, you know, yeah, all these trails right next to, you know, very close to where we live. Um, and so I, I have to schedule that in. Yeah, I have to schedule it in. So that is a big part of my self care that is going to take a little more work. It's going to be adjustment. I I wish you could just come over with all the kids and we could yeah. do a big, a big motivating one hour hard hike. <gasps> Me too. But 
I don't know if that's going to be possible. We're going to have to talk about that. Because I know with friends, my kids are more um, apt to exercise and, yeah. you know, think those things are, they, are fun. Would they exercise that hard if we were all on a yeah, I think intense so. hike together? I mean, they do like to... Yeah, you're right. They would work. They would work. If that's the only way we got to see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> my wheels okay. are turning. Okay. Yeah. All right. So our last one is yeah. fun. And we wanted mm-hmm. to add this in because I think, at least for me, and I don't think you probably feel like this because you are very in tune to fun mm-hmm. and w- making it a priority. I, I am, am not as in tune to that. Yeah. So I want I to am, make sure. I'm in tune to fun as you are in tune to your reminders list. <laughs> like, if I haven't done fun yet, then that is an issue. <laughs> Then I have a problem with that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So this is probably a really easy one for you. This one for me takes planning in order for Mm -hmm. it to happen. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want the summer to go by and be like, well, that was the summer we stayed in all day and had that routine. (laughs) (laughs) That felt really great. I also want them to be like, oh, yeah, and we did these couple fun things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm Mm -hmm. trying to plan a couple fun things. Awesome. Awesome. What can you can you give us give well, me an example? Like, here are, are my thinking? ideas. We do have a camping trip planned for the end of June in a camper cabin. Awesome. I am not sure about the state of Minnesota and if they are going to allow that for June. Mm-hmm. They have canceled everything, all the um, reservations up until June first. Okay. And then now they're saying you can make a reservation from July first on. I don't know what's happening oh, in June. Interesting. So. I'm crossing my fingers that we will still be able to go to this camper cabin. I would feel yeah. safe going to a camper cabin. Uh, I would feel, I feel like that is a, I mean, you're still just with your family, you know, isolated in nature. Mm-hmm. So I feel pretty yeah. safe doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel so. like that's a safe, fun activity. So we have just one of those for wipes, the end of June. Wipe stuff down. Wipe it, wipe it down and you're mm-hmm. good. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Ask my husband. He's he's going to give me some tips. Okay. I don't know. And so then I was thinking really, I mean, the fun is not going to be we're not going to be like, you know, doing the uh, unlimited bowling or the like $5 <laughs> movies on yeah. Tuesdays. You know, know we're not going to be doing any of that. And so really the fun is going to be nature fun, which yep. I'm great with. I feel like this is our chance. <laughs> yes. Um, is this the summer that I'm going to visit the state? Like the whole state? and Not the whole state, but, you know, like yeah. interesting places in the state and exactly see what it has to offer, which Maybe. I've always wanted to do. And so I'm my wheels are turning about like maybe a couple day trips mm-hmm. um, to interesting spots that we've never been. And I think in order for those things to happen, for me, I know for you, like, you can spontaneously do that. Like, you could wake up one day and be like, we're going to visit this. And then you yeah. just go. Maybe. Maybe not during a pandemic. But oh, yes. really? That's yeah. what my personality wise, I would like to do that. Yes. Yeah. True. I feel like I need to plan this out. Like, mm-hmm. next Monday, this is what we're doing. And so we can all yeah. kind of, I can yeah. mentally prepare for it. So yeah. I am going to put a few things on the calendar like that. It might be camper cabins in state Mm -hmm. parks it Mm -hmm. might be visiting a historic monument um visiting some nature area that we have not visited something like that so great yeah that's awesome yeah and there are so many great things to see in minnesota so many great things would be pretty easy to get to i think without without leaving a footprint you know anywhere you know yeah for sure how about you how are you gonna do fun well this is tricky for me because I feel like <laughs> I've poured my heart into this year of having, you know, traveling. Right. And I feel like we're coming off like a year of fun. I mean, asterisk, because it's like been a lot of hard work too, the <clears throat> traveling. Um, but I do feel like it's been an adventure after an adventure after an adventure. So mm-hmm. a fun for us is going to, the big thing is just moving into a house. Everybody yeah. is going to, that is going to feel like the best thing for everybody. I know. It really is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, um, besides that, uh, we are going to, you know, in the past, we've always celebrated our half birthdays, especially the kids' half birthdays, because all their birthdays are in the middle of winter. Um, and 
I think we got away from it last summer. Last summer was the first summer that we kind of like dropped it a little bit. We just kind of forgot about them. We were busy, you know, selling owls. And so we didn't do that. But I feel like I think we might need to bring that back this year just Mm. to have something to celebrate, you know, in the -hmm. middle of summer when we're at home and not doing anything. So, yeah. And, you know, because it's a long time. We have Christmas. We have, you know, four birthdays and Christmas. All the big celebrations are all at the same time. So it's nice to have something in the summer to just celebrate. It doesn't have to be a big deal, but, you know, like an ice cream treat or whatever and yeah whatever so anyway that and then I've been thinking and I haven't I've done zero research on this but I know there are I know drive-in movies are making a comeback oh yeah so I want to look into that I would love to see that happen in Minnesota because drive-in movies are so fun and I remember as a kid going to drive-in movies and I would just have so much fun doing that with our kids you went to summer. drive-in movies as a kid i did yeah but it, w- i have to ask you where because um, i don't think well, there are many was, places oh yeah there are I places i went to up in bemidji minnesota oh where, you did yes where your extended family lives where my extended family lives and so i would go with my mm. parents aunts and uncles you know oh that's fun and so yeah so many good memories going to drive-ins and i would love to do i'd love to experience that with our kids we have actually gone to a couple of drive-ins drive-in movies with our kids but I feel like especially in the summer they start so late (laughs) yeah like nine o'clock yeah (laughs) and so I think nobody ever made it that far but it's seriously especially and Sean especially wants to do I mean he's always wanted to do drive-in movies and I've always said no our kids cannot stay up that late and now they're kind of old enough to do that so I just wrote that down. That is such a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to look that up too. Great. If I was, anybody and then I is was, in Minnesota yeah. and you know of any, let oh, us know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. And I was thinking that could be something you could do with friends. Like your cars mm-hmm. could just be near each other. Mm-hmm. And it would feel a little more like a shared experience, even if you're yeah. not super close to each other. Right. Definitely. Yep. So I'm right. <laughs> putting that in your head too. Planted All right. I love it. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's good for me. I think mm-hmm. we should move on to LTWs. Sounds good. All right. All right. Angela, what are you loving this week? Okay. I am loving uh, bookshop.org. Have you heard Ooh. of this? No. Okay. So this is a website and a, it's an organization, bookshop.org. And they are a place where you can buy books that is an alternative to Amazon. Ooh, and they nice. are supporting independent book <gasps> sellers in the process. That is so, so awesome. So they're first of all they're a certified B Corp, which mm-hmm. I don't know if Love you know that. much about that, but I, they yeah. you know have uh, put a priority on their values yes. and making a positive impact in the community yes. as much as they do profit. So so that's good news. And then they, whenever you buy books on their site, they donate 10% of their profits to independent bookstores, independent mm-hmm. booksellers. Um, awesome. An independent bookseller can register with them and then be, get the 10% of the profit. Also, um, you can become an affiliate just like Amazon, mm-hmm. and they will give profits to affiliates. Um, and then independent booksellers can also like advertise On Mm bookshop.org, that could be their, like, online presence, could be on bookshop.org, and then they can get, I think, a bigger share of the profits. Awesome. So, um, I really like this because it's a nice website that's slick and easy to use, and they have all the books. So, it's as easy as ordering on Amazon. Good. And I've, I've I've ordered from our local independent bookstore mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it has been okay, but the websites are kind of, you know, not that great, yeah. which I understand because <laughs> I get it. It's yeah. hard to, takes a lot of money to yeah, have yeah. a nice for website, small, right? Small businesses to be able to right, do that is really right. tough. So this is a place for all those independent bookstores to go. Awesome. Um, and so though I really want to support a specific store, I mm-hmm. feel like if everybody gets on board with bookshop.org, <laughs> It could be a real alternative to Amazon. Yeah. You know, which yes. I think, I mean, I'm obviously not anti Amazon. I yeah. buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, yeah. mm-hmm. but I would like to not. I would like to diversify yeah. where I buy things. Yeah. And definitely to support uh, 
bookstores. Right. Local bookstores. Oh, I mean. Right. So the issue really is, important. though, that, you know, the prices are bookstore prices. Mm-hmm. Not Amazon prices. Yep. yep. You know, and so you you're, okay paying, you got, you're paying in shipping. You're paying, like, sure. five, maybe around 4 to $6 in shipping, depending on yeah. what you buy. Yeah. So... I mean, I have to think of it like that. Like I'm actually going into a bookstore and paying those prices like I would in a bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably not going to get. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, but I have to say, I'm very uh, willing to pay an extra $5 to not go into Target, you know, yeah, for right. shipped or things like that. Right. I, you know, I pay. You're I paying pay extra. For that You're paying extra in other ways. Yes. Exactly. And to know that it's going towards these bookstores is really awesome yes so um it just started like a few months ago I think right before the pandemic or maybe in January or February mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. um it just started and so I've placed an order so I kind of hesitated making it my LTW because I yeah. haven't used it a ton but I did place yeah. an order and it went well and good so I think you'll try it there's something very special about physical books right now because we can't yeah. go to the library yeah <laughs> And to actually get real books is kind of a treat now. It's a treat. I feel like it's a treat. (laughs) And I'm trying to remember, too, when I'm buying, like, you know, some of, as a homeschooler, you might get a workbook or, um, Mm -hmm. you know, like a, not, not a novel or something, you know, like a different kind of book. They have all those, too. So you should look for those on bookshop.org. So that sounds great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. How about you? What's your LTW? Okay, I'm loving another show. Guys, I've really been diving into good shows this month. That's awesome. <laughs> um, this one is called Hentified. It looks like gentified. It starts mm-hmm. with a G, but it, you say it Hentified. It's on Netflix, and it is uh, it is just such a wonderful show. I mean, I know you started it. And I just watched my first episode. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with it. I actually haven't watched the last episode because I don't want it to be over. Wow. That's the only reason. It's the only reason. I, I saw just... it was renewed for a season two, though. <gasps> Good. Yeah. Yay. I looked it up. Good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm so excited. So it's basically, it's about uh, a Mexican family living in Los Angeles, Mexican-American, and uh, they were living in a gentrified neighborhood so Mm. it's everything's getting expensive lots of fancy stores are popping up and they're becoming they own a mexican food taco store or restaurant and they're trying to figure out how to become relevant in this new you know neighborhood basically it's a new neighborhood and um you know it's old school with new school and you know i mean just all the tough decisions that are being made and uh, just the social impacts and it's it's such a great show and i am i love the characters they developed the characters so amazingly that i am just in love with them Mm. all Mm. um and you know that's a sign of a really good show when you just um you feel like you know these people they're your friends (laughs) (laughs) that's how i feel i just i love them and i feel like i'm learning so much too so it's That's just like great. a win-win-win all over the place. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I can't wait to watch more. Directed by, directed and produced by America Ferreira, who I love. I've always yeah, loved her. She's the so. director too. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, she's, she's directed, she didn't direct every episode, but she mm, has directed okay. some of them and she produced, produced the yeah. show. So. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. This has been a nice 10 weeks to be together. And so yeah. we've, we've enjoyed that. Um, and we are taking yeah. a break, like we said, and we'll be back in August. So Can't we have a lot to of, see you all. Again. if you've listened to all the episodes, bless you. If you haven't, there's a lot more to listen to in the back catalog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to yeah, get you through. I, yes, exactly. There's so much more to listen to. And if you want even more updated episodes of us, join Patreon because we're going to be there this summer. For sure. All right. And then otherwise, you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at Homeschool Unrefined. And our website is homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can find links to everything that we talk about. And we will see you in August. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor. And Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things.